praise you, we praise you. Again, Isaiah in Isaiah 64 7, he says, Yet Lord, you are our Father, and we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. It's such a privilege. Like the psalmist says, it says, Who is man that you are mindful of him? Mortal flesh that you care for him. Yet in every time that God asks us and invites us to surrender ourselves to him, he does so because he knows that in it is our benefit. In surrender, is our release in surrender is our freedom in surrender is our wholeness in being surrendered to God is the truest form of joy and abundant life there is for you and I so then why do we struggle with surrender so much because it's sown in us Surrender is only for the weak. And self-dependence is what we're called to. But brothers and sisters, God invites us now to move from self-dependence to God-dependence. To move from keeping to our ways and our understandings to a higher ground of His ways and His understandings. To move from our shallow plans and desires to God's will and his great desires for us. Because what he has charted out for us is more beautiful than we would ever comprehend. And so many of us are living that reality right now. Maybe we've hesitated to take those plunges of faith, but here we are and God has been so faithful. So let's continue to give ourselves, to yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit, the beautiful, beautiful third person of the Trinity who loves us so deeply and his reign here is to help us to walk in the path of Jesus to come into the fullness of the knowledge of God and to live freely and fully our identity as the sons and daughters of the most high God so that in boldness and confidence we can call God our father my father and Jesus our Lord, my Lord. So as we sing this, this hymn, let's just cry out to the Holy Spirit in surrender and a yielded spirit, a teachable spirit and tell him, Lord, I'm yielding myself to you. Do whatever you will because in it is, is abundant life. In it is joy. In it there's freedom. In it there's the best possible outcome of my life, which is to glorify you and to live my life for you. Let's sing the song to him as a prayer of surrender and faith in God. Take 
You are the treasure of my life. And nothing, nothing, nothing compares to this. Jesus said these words. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. Abide in me, he said. Brothers and sisters, many of us struggle with prayerlessness.
but i strongly sense the lord telling us that he is going to release the grace to pray this is god's invitation for us today relationships everything that consumes our time cannot be compared to giving our time to the lord so let's just commit our lives once again and tell him lord i want you to be my first because i know that when i seek you first in your kingdom all else is added to me or i build my life in vanity let's just spend these few minutes making that commitment to god to make him our first to give him what is due to love him with all our heart mind and strength and let us strive to abide in him to go to him first with our joys and our sorrows the grace to fall deeper in love with him our first love Under 
once again dear brothers and sisters i am just reminded by the holy spirit this incident in the old testament was samuel hears a voice his name being called out and he wakes up and he goes to eli and he says have you called me and he does that i think three times and eli says no i did not call you but then eli says i why don't you go and ask the lord and then samuel goes to the lord and he says speak lord your servant is listening i strongly sense the lord asking us or calling us back to his heart to find our rest in him if you and i are guilty of turning to maybe an elder or someone we are in a relationship with maybe a wife or a father or someone else besides god and we made them our idols that we go to them first for our every need he's saying come to me i am your father i am your good good father I loved you first come to me come to me Jesus says come to me all who are heavy laden and burdened and I will give you rest for my yoke is easy and my burden is light and imitate me for I am humble of heart and I'm meek Let's just seize this moment dear brothers and sisters Hebrews 3:7 says oh if today you hear his voice harden not your heart But let's just go down on our knees and just tell this lord yes lord yes lord i have been too busy and spent over things that are maybe even for most part very spiritual but i don't have a working relationship with you but today i relent today i say i'm sorry today i come to you with with penance in my heart with a contrite heart i come to you because that's the sacrifice you need for time and again your word says i do not want your bullocks i don't want your sacrifices i am not hungry they don't feed me i don't need your riches but a contrite heart i will not spurn that is a sweet smelling oblation to you so lord we come to you right now and we commit our lives to you once again to make you our first love to find our strength and to abide in you and i know you will give us the strength to see this through find rest my soul through and through you know my inmost being you have searched me and you have known me you know when i sit and when i stand 
upon all of my travels is your stamp. You knit me together in my mother's womb. You have counted the number of bones in my body. fearfully and wonderfully you have made me lord and your thoughts towards me are numerous and if i were to count them they would outnumber the grains of sand on the sea even before a word is upon my lip you already know it you have numbered days of my life you are my maker and i belong to you lord thank you that you're so close to me so close that i don't even realize you're not a distant god but you are a god who is with us with me and i thank you lord Oh 
thank you lord that you take my hand and you guide me that you call me your beloved you said you will no longer be called forsaken but married to god i'm yours i'm yours i'm yours Thank you Father, thank you Father. We worship you. For you
Just love the Lord, dear brothers and sisters. Not just from our emotions, but from our intellects, from our wills, from our very beings. Let's love Him. Let His presence leave us undone. Whatever it takes to be true to Him, whatever it takes to be faithful to Him, there's no price too high to pay to walk with the Lord. These moments are so special. And be it for me, I would probably want like Peter to put a tent here and stay here forever. But you call us to live our lives out in fidelity to you. So I pray, give us all the strength to do that. To imitate you in holiness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And may all the glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. For as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be.
world without end. Amen. Peace be with you, dear brothers and sisters, and God bless you. Thank you, Katya, for this time of worship, and Katya and your team for the awesome time of worship. We now have Brother Simon, who will be sharing the word of God this evening on the topic, Joshua, the man of God. Dear friends, this evening uh, we will we will take we will discuss about the leadership of Joshua in the Bible. And um, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, like three men of God uh, will come one after the other. One is Abraham, Moses, and Joshua. And Joshua is one person who has been chosen by the Lord after getting trained under Moses. And the Bible says that Moses was asking God to to choose a person after him when he was alive. And if you read the book of Numbers, chapter 27, verse 15, now Moses said to the Lord, O Lord, you are the God who gives bread to all creatures. Please appoint a new man as a leader for the community. Give them someone who will guide them wherever they go and lead them into battle. So the community of the Lord will not be like sheep without a shepherd. This is the uh, prayer of Moses to God Almighty as his terms, as the time is coming closer and he wanted God to select somebody by, by, by who can lead him after him. And uh, this is a, what an amazing prayer um, Moses makes unto God. It is ending with, Lord will, Lord will not be like a sheep without a shepherd. He knows that uh, we in a, in a, in the God wants him to, God wants uh, God, himself, God wants him to take a decision um, about his uh, leadership, but uh, he is putting back to God saying, Lord, I can't select somebody after me, but I want you to select somebody after me. That's a very important thing uh, which you need to understand for Moses. Moses is waiting for the Lord to select somebody after him. And that's very important. So many times in our leadership style, uh, we don't pray to God to, uh, to appoint somebody after us. And here Moses, after, after working with God for so many years, and uh, he's asking God, God, who can be person after me? Then, then Lord replied, the Lord replied, Take Joshua, son of Nun, who has the spirit in him, and lay your hands on him. Now, the Lord is uh, instructing Moses now. The uh, selection is almost over from God's side. God said, Take Joshua, son of Nun, who has the spirit in him and lay your hands on him. Present him to Eliza, the priest before the whole community and publicly commission him to lead the people. Now here, uh, the Lord is telling very clearly that the new leader is chosen by him and he has told uh, to Moses to call the full community. If he wants to make the transfer of uh, anointing in the, in, the, in, the, in the presence of all the people and he calling the priest Eliza to do that also so that uh, the new leader will be chosen. But if you look at uh, the biblical references and other things, you find Moses had an inclination to have two leaders. One is a political leader and one is a spiritual leader. But if you ask you, from the Bible says, very clear, Joshua had an anointing of a political leader and a spiritual leader. And then the Bible says, transfer some of the authority to him. So the whole community of Israel will obey him. See, what a step by step God is trying to tell what to do. He's saying that in your presence only, transfer some of his authority. See, this is one of the instructions of God. When you select somebody as a leader in your, in your ministry, you must select prayerfully God chosen man and slowly transferring the responsibility upon him so that he will take the responsibility in your presence. So it will not be sudden for him. And then he says, Transfer some of the authority to him so the whole community of Israel will live, obey him. When direction from the Lord is needed, Joshua will stand before the El Eliza, the priest, who use the uh, urine, the one of the sacred Lord's cast before the Lord, to determine his will. This is how Joshua and the rest of the community of Israel will determine everything they should do. So God gives a clear instruction to Moses and how exactly Joshua should run the show. And that's very important. Dear friends, Adam Moses building up a beautiful ministry uh, in his presence at the age of 120, he is 
healthy here, but God is inspiring him to think about the second line. And not only second line, choosing a leader after him. And then if you, uh, then verse 22, so Moses did as the Lord commanded. So Moses did as the Lord commanded. So obedience is total. He would have appointed as one of his son. And any, any, any nowadays leadership uh, so interesting, they want their sons to become men and pastors. They will, uh, they will do build everything, then they call one of the sons to take over my leadership. But uh, Moses had a similar chance to handle the leadership with one of his sons. But here it says, Moses did as the Lord commanded. He presented Joshua to Eliezer, the priest, and the whole community. Moses laid his hands on him and commissioned him to be lead the people just as the Lord had com commanded through Moses. The Bible says Moses laid the hands on Joshua along with the priest Eliezer and they commissioned him to be the future leader of the Israelites. So dear friends, this, this evening, look at the way that God said to Joshua. It's so, it's so simple. Yes, uh, God, even Moses was so obedient to God. You know, there was, there was an amazing understanding between God and the Moses of selecting the new leader. And this is a good lesson for us this evening, dear friends, to understand in the, in the ministry or in the official capacity, you want to do, you know, transfer your, your, your work to somebody. This is one of the beautiful style. And the way the style look up to God for a new leader. And the Moses look up to a new leader and God select Joshua. And the Bible says, interestingly, I don't have much time. Joshua was trained by Moses. He worked under him. He was such an obedient man, a young man, worked under Moses for many years. And Joshua was mentored by him. And then if you look at, you know, Joshua chapter 1. Now the situation comes in that the Bible says the, the Moses was, was died and the selection of new process comes in. After the death of Moses, the Lord served, Lord servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of uh, son of Nun. Moses assisted. He said, Moses, my servants are dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead the people. Now, Bible says very clearly, God comes again. He got them stopped there. When Moses was not there, God comes to meet Joshua. The, the Bible says, he is the son of Nun. He comes to meet him. It is not that Joshua went to meet God. God comes to meet Joshua. Dear friends, this evening, what a way God works. God comes to meet the new leader. And then the Bible says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the river Jordan into the land I have given them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Whatever you set your foot, you, 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 shall, you will be on the land I have given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains, mountains in the north, from the river Euphrates in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of Hittites, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. The word of God says very clearly, nobody can stand against you, my dear Joshua, as long as you live. You know why? I will be with you as with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. So today, dear friends, whenever a God calls for leadership in you in your ministry, or in your work spot, in your, in, your, in your company where you're working. The Bible says very clearly, no one can stand before you. You know why? Because God is standing with you. The Lord Himself is standing with us. When, the, when you have got a responsibility to your leadership, when God has chosen you, God has called you, don't look at your capacity, don't look at your intelligence, don't look at your wisdom, but look at the capacity of God. The Bible says to Joshua, do you know, he says, no one will be able to stand against you as long as, long as you live. For I will be with you as I with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. He's telling to Joshua, before starting his leadership skills, all the leadership skills are drawn from God to Joshua. Lord, Lord instructing him. The foundation of his new leadership skills will be laid by God himself. As the Lord says to, to Moses, Joshua, be strong and courageous. For you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I sold to their ancestors. I will give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. 
What a clear instruction by God. This instruction is given for us this, this evening. I want you to read this portion slowly, steadily, carefully. Lord, first of all, said, be strong and courageous. You know why? Because the Lord is trying to say, earlier he said, I am with you wherever you go. I will not fail you or abandon you. Because God himself is with you, you should be strong and courageous. Come what may. What are the situations you're going to go through in life? God telling all of us the same, be strong and courageous. Then he says that, you know, you will lead the people, not somebody. You and I, being when you're called by the Lord to lead the people, you should say, Lord, I am going to lead the people with you. God is with us, but you should lead the people. You know, and the, and the word of God said, be strong and courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from, from them, turning either to the right or to the left. So when the God has instructed us, God has given a very clear instruction from the God's word. It is not my business to deviate either to the right or to the left. I need to focus on God's instructions. You must you know, always, I always uh, tell people, there are two things will happen in our lives. One, one is the word, the Bible. And then the voice of God every day. When you come before the Lord every day in the morning, when it's for doing a quiet time, God will speak to you. You, have, you can hear the audible voice of God inside you. This is the, too important. One is the, and that instruction, the voice that you receive from God in the morning along with the God's word, is the, the word for the day. Don't, don't compromise on it. That is, the, that is the instruction God given to you and me to follow it to the last T. So here it says that, do not deviate from them, turn either to the right or the left. Then you will be successful in everything what you do. The word of God says, you will be successful, my dear friend, in everything what you do. You will be successful in everything what you do. You will be successful in everything what you do because you are clearly following the instruction of Almighty God. You know, we are, we are, we are the, the men of God failed here. They operated on flesh. They operate from the hear the voice of men. They always hear the voice of their own. But the Bible says, listen to the instruction of God from the God's word and hear the voice of God every day. Ask the Lord's instruction every day. Which is the way you need to walk? Which is the way you take a call and decisions? And the servant says, whatever you do shall be successful. And then he says again, study this book of instruction continually. He says, not one moment, all the time, all throughout the day. Look at instruction continually. What given by God Himself? Because you, He, He says that to to to, to implement everything continually. Study this book of instruction. Meditate on it day and night. The, if the Lord is speaking to Joshua. Meditate what you have spoken to day and night. Because as the God meditate the God's word. As the voice of God meditated by you, the Lord is speaking to you more and more. So that all those minor details will be known to you. And if you look at the life of Noah, for that matter, you know, the Bible says Noah built that ark. And I'm, I'm sure he might have waited every day for the instruction when he built the ark. So there will be no leakage in the ark. The ark should be big enough to ca carry his family, carry those all those uh, animals and birds. Everything shall be carried by him. So God is extremely clear for you to when God gives the instruction, instruction the last T. You should be very clear about instruction given by Lord. Meditate on it day and night. Suddenly in the night, God waits for you. Many times in, the, in, the, in my time, suddenly God will not allow me to speak in the sleep in the night. Sorry. And he will spawn in instruction when I lie in the bed. He will wake me up. Suddenly you will say, to, to look at the phone and send the instruction to some people. Sometimes one third in the morning, two third in the morning, four third in the morning, early morning. Because God is speaking to us day and night. And I have seen and, and have seen experience, dear friend. God was always speak to me more in the night time, in the early morning than the day time. Meditate on it day and night. And so that you will be sure to obey every written the Bible says that everything spoken by the Lord will be implemented by us. Many times we have to stand against the people in authority. Lovingly tell them, this is what the Lord spoken to me. Sometimes we need to tell them. 
but you need to follow the instruction of God. So many times, I might tell you, dear friends, whenever you want to spend time with the, with the people of that, especially Archbishop of Bangalore, or the bishop who is an episcopal advisor of mine, spiritual director of mine, they are all in authority. They got anointing. They, 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 their word is very, very important for us. So whenever we go and meet them, I need to pray to God, Lord, you are given instruction like this. Let that, let that be confirmed by the people in authority. And I'm telling you, dear friends, every time God never failed me. Lord spoken through this bishops and archbishops and the spiritual directors, and I could do it what the Lord wants me to do. Because, dear friends, continuously spend time with God. The Lord can speak to you. Joshua is a man, he spent time with God all the time. That's the reason he was an amazing leader in both ways, politically and spiritually. You could take the responsibility politically, he was right, spiritually he was right, because God instructed him. He fought, fought, fought and fought many, many wars and won all the time, except one, the Bible says. Your friends today were telling the Joshua that, that you shall be prosperous and success in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Wherever you go. The Lord your God is with us wherever you go. This is the command, this is the command given by the Lord in the beginning of the leadership of Joshua. And that Joshua was successful because he applied the leadership, you know, instruction by the Lord. Till the end. Dear friends, this evening I want to tell you, Joshua is an amazing man of God. When the Lord told him to go for a Jericho prayer, you know, you know, worship the Lord, go, go, go around that Jericho wall and pray, and there's been all instruction what to do, who to go in the front, who in the back, what to do, or what is the first day to do, second day to do, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, seventh day. And the Jericho wall fell down because he has listened to the voice of God all the time. Don't wait on somebody to listen to the voice on behalf of you. Even in your homes, as a, especially I've dealt the men of, men of God at homes, God always gives the instruction to the husband, the man of the house. Many families have failed because the man of the house has failed to hear the voice of God. Here the instruction of God. Many of the leaders fail because they don't go before the Lord. They allow the people to go before the Lord. I and you, if you are called as the chosen leader, I and you need to go before the Lord. Ask God's instruction, dear friends. That's why Joshua worked in ministry. He's worked in his, 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 his leadership. He went, went to the Lord for instruction. Every war he won because he went before the Lord every time. The reason Bible says, don't be afraid in this case, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God is with us. It is not our uh, our war. The Bible says battle is belongs to God Almighty. I am not fighting a battle, but I am fighting a battle where God instructed me what to do. But the battle is belongs to God. If I fail, I'm failing God. You know why? Because I failure to accept the voice of God. Listen to the voice of God. We fail every time in, the, in, the, in our lives because we fail to recognize God has spoken. And many times we never spoken to God and to, took decisions in life. Yeah, I can tell you with confidence in God is my witness. Every time I failed, I know I have not listened to the voice of God. I failed my dear friends. I failed to be a person because I, I could not understand the, what the Lord spoke to me. I never meditated on it. I took that voice and I implemented it without meditating on it. When you meditate only, the minor details comes. God started speaking to the small, small things. You know, recently we had a 24 hour prayer uh, for, for uh, we are trying to get the support of all the 14 dioceses, the archbishop and the bishops, a very short time, very few days, within about three to four weeks. And we need to do everything. But I think I'm not telling you, dear friends, we went before the Lord. We asked the Lord's instruction, including the minor matter like finances. We needed about one, one lakh, one lakh fifty thousand rupees plus. Last minute we need to raise. God gave us every rupee, every, every coin required for this program. Because we waited on the Lord. We not look for people to help us. We say, Lord, provide us funds. God gave us supernaturally. 
because Bible says that for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I don't know how many people are excited this evening to understand our God is with us all the time. God is with us all the time. He is with us wherever you go. I want to take the closing. I started with, with chapter 1. I will close, close with the chapter 24, the last chapter in Joshua. I just read uh, verse 14, 24 verse 14. Now here comes the closing of Joshua's ministry. Literally. He is calling the people again. He is calling the full community. And he's telling this something very profound and powerful. I think this is more, as important as the beginning. You know, Joshua is speaking to people. He might have gone before the Lord that day, spent time with the Lord, quietly spending in maybe fasting and prayer, asking the Lord what to speak to the people. And he says, verse 14, So the fear, fear the Lord and serve Him wholeheartedly. He is telling the people, Fear God. Today, you know why I am saying the church is failing every day? There is no fear of God in amongst the leadership today. People are not fearing God at, at all. They love to do what they want to do. I, I can tell you the, across the board. I, I mean, by the grace of God, Lord, I'm, 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 I'm an I'm auditor for many Christian organizations. But I, I, one thing is lacking in the leadership today. The people don't fear God. Bible says, so fear the Lord and serve Him wholeheartedly. The Bible says, love your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. Serve Him wholeheartedly. Put away forever the idols your ancestors worship when they live beyond the river Ephrathus and Egypt. Serve the Lord alone. The Bible says, we have so many idols even today. We are worshipping idols. When idols are not the physical idols alone. We are talking about we made so many idols in our own heart. It may be, it may be today you want fear of, fear of future, an idol, fear of your job, fear about your children, fear about your wife, what's happening to her, fear about your parents. You're all the time thinking what will happen to your dad and mom. I'm telling you nothing will happen in anybody's life without God's permission. So these are the idols. So it means when we can't worship the living God, you know, because we are, we are, we are not in a position to worship the Lord. That, that God is trying to tell us, fear God and, 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 and serve Him wholeheartedly. Then He said, put away evil, evil idols, your ancestors worship when they live, live beyond the river Ephrathus and Egypt. Serve the Lord alone. Serve the Lord, dear friends. Serve your God alone. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then, then choose today whom you will serve. Oh, I know Joshua closing. He worked with the Lord for many years. He served his community so well. He blessed his community. He, he, has, he has worked day and night as, as a spiritual leader, as a political leader. He had, he had an amazing anointing. But today he's challenging all the people after death, discipling them, after you know, speaking to them all the time, all the days, many years in life. He's saying, You take a call now. Whom you want to serve? It's a call that belongs to each one of our dear me. No bishop can change your call. No priest can change your call. The call is each one of us. I said, but if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you serve. Would you prefer the God of your ancestors serve beyond the Ephrathus, or, or will it be God of the Emeritus in whose land you will live? But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. What a thing. I think this is a, this is a powerful scripture. He said that you know what you want to do. I am telling you right now. I done whatever I expect you to do as a leader. And you can go to anybody. You can go to this God or that God. You can serve anybody. I don't have any problem because God has given free will to us. God not forced his will to us. Even Jesus said in Gethsemane, Father, if it's possible, take the cup of serve for me, but that will be done, dear friends today. So he is not going to force you to do what you want to do. You can take a call today and say, Lord, I don't want to serve you. I want to follow. There are so many gods and goddesses are waiting to, to, to lead you. And here the Bible says, Joshua making a strong straight from his side. He is speaking on behalf of his family. As the head of the family, he's saying, he's saying that, but as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. You know, one thing Joshua tells us today, 
Can you take make this statement today as each one of our listeners? But first, as for me and my family, we will serve the living God. Dear friends, you know, today we have to take a stand for ourselves. We are in an interesting time. Coronavirus is hitting in a very bad way. Everywhere people are concerned about many things. But I can tell you, dear friend, don't worry about all those things. God will take care of all those things. But you need to take care of the soul of you and your family. Your name should be written in the book of life, the Bible says, in the book of Revelation. Can you say that today, if you die, can you confidently can tell your family is serving God Almighty? And if it is not, your family not serving Jesus, if your not family is not with Jesus Christ, and you are not in the Lord, today you can take a call. If you want, dear friends, the listeners, if you want to offer your life to Jesus Christ this evening, you can come before the Lord, kneel down and prostrate before God, flip your hands to Jesus, the Lord. You can say the same word what Joshua has spoken. He said, as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Father, we thank you, Father, for this beautiful time. Joshua is an amazing man of God, but totally obedient to God's will. He followed God's word and applied God's word, meditated God's word, spoke the God's word, ministered to his community. His, his, he has even to his last breath, he could say that word, that's for me and my family we serve you, Lord Jesus. This very moment I pray, all those who are listening today, those who have still not committed their life to Jesus, still not accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. Lord, we pray today, convict them by the Holy Spirit of God. Let them say yes to the Lord and no to the Word, so they can give their life to Jesus. Father, we pray you continue to minister to us and bless us. For all this prayer, we make the mighty and the matchless and glorious name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen and amen. Thank you, Simon, for the awesome talk on Trust of the Man of God. Next week we'll be having a series of talks on, on the major and minor prophets. We'll be having it on YouTube and Facebook. So Jesus is Lord.